What did I tell you guys about Hoji Fushiguro? Didn't I say that this guy is an absolute monster? The manga chapters 70, 71 and 72 were adapted for this episode and I can safely say the anime did it better. Don't get me wrong, I love the manga. The anime really showed off how fast Hoji was to the point where he was even outpacing Gojo's infinity attacks. This is what Gojo needed. He needed this fight against Toji now in order for him to improve later on as a physical fighter. But let's just talk about the greatness that is Toji. Now guys, Toji was a part of the Zenin family as he mentioned in the first episode of season 2 where he mentioned he doesn't go by the name of Zenin anymore but instead Fushiguro. Why is this significant? Well now in this episode, Gojo stated that Toji doesn't have any cursed energy. Maki, who is also part of the Zenin family, but similar to Toji, also doesn't have any cursed energy. And in brief moments in season 1 and even in Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, she explains the hardship and humiliation she had suffered in the hands of her own family, the Zenin family. Now you go back to Toji who also doesn't have any cursed energy and is now known as the sorcerer killer, as well as him abandoning the name Zenin, we can all assume that he hates the Zenin family because if you think about it, if Maki got years of traumatic abuse from her family because she doesn't have any cursed energy, then it's safe to say that Oji also got years of torment as well. So much so that he now has become the sorcerer killer. So if anything, Toji's treatment was probably worse than Maki's. In this episode, we see Toji explain that he had to go and see Gojo for himself when Gojo was a kid. He wanted to see what the hype was all about. Who was Satoru Gojo, the boy born with the six eyes and the limitless technique? The fact that he had to go and see this prodigy for himself and the look of disgust both of these characters have shown to each other is really telling. Gojo could probably tell that Toji was up to no good using his six eyes even back then, hence why he was able to look back and sense that Toji was there. I swear, the look back he did to Toji almost seemed threatening. It was like Gojo was saying to Toji, yeah, I can see you, so don't even think about trying anything. And with Toji looking back, it seemed like he was in awe on how strong Gojo already was at that point, where he even says that that was the first and last time anyone had ever noticed him being behind them. Toji being the sorcerer killer and Gojo already being the strongest sorcerer in the world, even as a kid. In chapter 96, it was stated that Gojo's birth altered the balance of power between the cursed spirits and the jujitsu sorcerers and toji is seeing the admiration that gojo was getting literally from birth and when you compare that to himself a human being with no cursed energy and is part of the big three sorcerer families who have rivaled the Gojo clan such as in chapter 117 when Gojo said to Megumi that the head of both the Gojo clan and the Zenin family of which at that time the head of the Gojo clan was also both a six-eyed user and a limitless user whereas with the Zenin family it was someone who mastered the Ten Shadows techniques and they both ended up killing each other. So the foreshadowing is already there between these two families and with Gojo explaining the history, it's clear that there is a rivalry between both families. So now if you put in context where you can see that there is a history of violence between both families and the fact that Gojo is the strongest sorcerer in the world with both six eyes and limitless technique, which is even rare for members of the Gojo clan. Then you have Toji who is an outcast of the Zenyu family with no cursed energy. And in that moment where Toji was looking at Gojo and Gojo giving him the death stare back, it was like this fight was destined to happen. The guy that is hailed and almost worshipped in the Jujutsu Kaisen world versus the guy who is loathed, hated, despised in the Jujutsu Kaisen world. There's so much hidden stories going into this fight when you look back as a manga reader. It's actually art. And now currently in the manga, we are having Sukuna who is taking over Megumi's body and is using the Ten Shadow techniques against Gojo himself. So it's like both the anime and in the manga currently, Gojo is fighting off against two generational members of the Zenin family. But you can see already going into the fight that Toji has so much more motivation for his fight against Gojo. Killing Riko is just a formality. It won't take long. As you saw at the end of the episode, he literally shot her through the head. It didn't even take a second for him to kill her. So that was not really much of an issue for him. But killing Gojo, it was like this was his life's work as a sorcerer killer. And now the strongest sorcerer in the world is face to face with him. This is the ultimate prize. 
This is what his life was leading up to ever since he first saw the boy with the six eyes in the flashback in this episode. Two crucial factors were the reason why Toji managed to kill Gojo in this episode. One is of course, as I mentioned earlier, is his motivation. This is his biggest prize. If he managed to defeat the undefeatable, then it will be like Christmas came early for Toji. Toji being amped up against Gojo whilst Gojo being tired and lacking cursed energy to begin with and almost underestimating Toji because Toji has no cursed energy. It was like Gojo was taking the piss and not really taking the fight that seriously. Don't get me wrong, he was still using techniques like cursed technique amplification where he used the maximum output to destroy the surrounding area. But you feel Gojo was still only on first gear. It was like Gojo could have gone up a level in this fight but before he could do that, Toji ended the fight swiftly using the flying heads as a way of distraction, making Gojo overthink his strategy which resulted in him getting stabbed through the neck, torso and the legs by the inverted spear of heaven. The second factor on why Gojo lost this fight is his over-reliance on cursed energy and techniques. He is so used to using cursed techniques whenever he fights, he doesn't really see the point in being a close combat specialist. In this episode, during the fight itself, Gojo mentioned that all he has to do is keep up pace with Toji's movements but because Toji is so fast, he was unable to do so. Which already signals to us that if you are a fast-paced fighter in your close combat skills and movement, in a physical fight without using any cursed energy, you should be able to defeat Gojo if both fighters Gojo and the fighter that Gojo is fighting up against don't use any cursed energy. Look at the previous episode, the old man that was fighting off against Ghetto. He assumed that Ghetto didn't want to get into a physical fight with him and we also had that scene where a random stranger bumped into Toji and he ended up falling. So the show itself is highlighting that physical close combat fights are still a part of this world despite having several jujitsu sorcerers with crazy curse techniques. And then when Gojo assumed that Toji was going after Riko, Toji outpaced Gojo with the close proximity ends up with him stabbing Gojo with the inverted spear of heaven. Gojo couldn't compete with Toji physically and because he couldn't keep up pace with Toji, that is how Toji ended up close enough to Gojo in order for him to stab him up and defeat him. And the fact that he has no cursed energy for Gojo to sense him with, it's a bit like Spider-Man where Spider-Man can't sense Venom with his spider sense. It's like you're fighting against a ghost or the boogeyman. Toji for me is the John Wick of the Jujutsu Kaisen world. He is the master assassin at play and when you look into his family history and what type of family he came from, you can imagine the anger and disgust he has for Jujutsu sorcerers. Maybe he also feels shame in the sense that he feels he is not good enough to be a Jujutsu sorcerer because he has no cursed energy. We saw it with Maki when she had conversations with her sister so you can imagine the same for Toji as well. The ending of this episode reminds me so much of the Junpei twist from the first season. Remember how Junpei was teased to be part of the gang with Yuji, Megumi and Nobara in the Jujutsu Kaisen opening? but he then ended up dying in the hands of Mahito. This episode brilliantly had the ending theme playing as Rika was giving her emotional speech on wanting to live on and carry on with her friends with Geto and Gojo, saying that they will fight against Master Tengen in order for Rika to live on with her life. So you would assume, wow, they did it. Gojo and Geto completed their true mission in saving Rika from both Hoji and Master Tengen. But no, Toji shot her in the head, killing her. The way the episode starts with a slice of life feel to it, to the way it ends with Gojo and Riko dead on the floor, is how crazy the Jujutsu Kaisen story is going to get in this season. So let's enjoy the ride guys. And guys, let me know your thoughts on this episode down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the Shaman Tribe.